Hello guys! So let me welcome you to the last part of our discussion on shareholders' equity. We will focus on quasi-reorganization. Sir, bakit wala ka ng camera ngayon? That is because yung oras, yung oras na nire-record ko itong topic na ito ay padilim na. Pag inopen ko pa yung camera, wala lang din kayong makikita, kaya mas mabuting patayin ko na lang yung camera. Pero ang ang mas mahalaga dyan is na-discuss pa rin yung topic. Okay? Sige. So, let's start right away. What is quasi-reorganization? Quasi-reorganization is a procedure in which a financially troubled company restates its accounts and establishes a fresh start in accounting sense. So, yung, yung mga companies na nag undergo ng quasi-reorganization are yung mga nagihirap or may problema financially. Okay? Ang quasi-reorganization, meaning yan is as if nag-reorganize yung company. Pero sa totoo lang, hindi siya talaga nag-reorganize. Ang, ang ni-reorganize niya lang ay yung shareholders' equity portion ng kanyang statement of financial position. Bakit kailangan mag-quasi-reorganization? Bakit kailangan niya mag-undergo ng quasi-reorganization? That is because... One main reason is that yung deficit niya napakalaki na. Napakalaki na nung deficit, masyadong masakit na sa mata para sa mga investors. Therefore, para maging para maging attractive pa rin naman yung she portion ng quas ng ng company na ito, nag-undergo siya ng quasi reorganization. Okay? Now, ano bang ba objective ng quasi reorganization? Eliminate the deficit. Eliminate the deficit. Now, pwede ba anytime mag-undergo ng quasi-reorganization, uh, quasi sir? Hindi. Kailangan humingi ka muna ng permiso from SEC to undergo quasi-reorganization. Pag pumayag, go. Pag hindi pumayag, bawal ka mag-undergo ng quasi-reorganization. Quasi-reorganization may be accomplished through two ways. Recapitalization, revaluation. Anong pinagkaiba ng dalawang ito maliban sa kanilang spelling? Pag sinabi nating recapitalization, mangyayari, ang account na gagamitin in order to wipe out the deficit will be the share premium. Okay? <clears throat> Pero pagdating sa revaluation naman, ang account na gagamitin niyo would be the revaluation surplus. Oh, ano lang natin, refresh lang natin ha. Ang revaluation surplus, yan ay ginagamit sa PPE under revaluation model. Di ba? So, revaluation surplus, that is an OCI item. Which is also a component of shareholders' equity. Ayan. So, tatandaan niyo sa quasi-reorganization, Ang objective dito is to eliminate the deficit. Okay? Sige. So, illustrative problem tayo. <clears throat> Barry Company had <clears throat> sustained heavy losses over a period of time and conditions warrant that the company should undergo a quasi-reorganization on December 31, 2017. So, ano ang mga, ang mga given information sa atin? First bullet, Inventory recorded, 2 million. Pero market value niya, 1.6 million. PPE recorded at 3 million. Pero magkano market value? 2.4 million. Then the par value is to be reduced to 350 pesos. Now, magkano yung mga balance ng shareholders equity accounts prior to quasi-reorganization? Number one, share capital is 10 million consisting of 20,000 shares with par value of 500 pesos. Share premium, 3.3 million. Deficit, 4.7 million. So, tinatanong tayo dito, magkano yung deficit na iwa-wipe out? Then, numbers 2, 3, and 4, balances of shareholders' equity accounts after quasi-reorganization. First, ang gagawin natin dito would be journal entries muna. Tandaan nyo yung tatlo nating scenario, uh, mga information kanina, yung bullet 1, bullet 2, and bullet 3. Okay, for the first two bullets, papansinin nyo, mas mataas yung account na nakarecord sa libro kesa sa market values, tama? Therefore, 
when you are undergoing quasi reorganization, you must restate those accounts. Okay? Now, for the first bullet, ang sabi natin doon, inventory was recorded at 2 million. Pero magkano market value? 1.6 million. You need to write it down to the market value of 1.6 million. Paano ang write down yan, sir? Through retained earnings. Gagalawin natin yung retained earnings natin. So that would be debit RE, credit inventory. Ni-write down natin. No need to record expense or any income items. Okay? Kasi idediretso natin yan sa retained earnings. Next, PPE. Naka-record daw sa libro, 3 million. Pero magkano na lang ang market value? 2.4 million. So dahil mababa ulit ang market value, that is an indicator na impaired yung PPE, kailangan natin i-write down. True retained earnings pa rin. Okay? Klaro ba tayo? Now, tatandaan nyo lang, nagkataon kasi na bumaba yung value ng PPE, kaya true retained earnings natin siya in-adjust. Pero in case na tumaas yung PPE, hindi, hindi siya sa retained earnings i-adjust, kundi sa revaluation surplus naman. Okay? Sige, next. The third bullet, ang sabi doon, i-reduce daw or babawasan natin yung par value to 350. Magkano pa yung par value prior to quasi reorganization? 500. Therefore, magkano ang ibabawas natin sa share capital? That is 150 pesos. 20,000 shares times 150, 3 million. Then, yung amount na ibinawas niyo sa share capital, magiging share premium na siya. Kasi lumalabas, amount in excess of par pa din siya. Alright? Okay. After these entries, alamin natin kung magkano yung deficit na iwa-wipe out natin. Now, anong klaseng deficit ang iwa-wipe out natin? That should be the adjusted deficit. Okay. Magkano yung deficit prior to quasi-reorganization or the unadjusted deficit? 4.7 million. Paki-effect yung mga adjustments natin sa retained earnings. Ilang nga ulit adjustments natin kanina? Dalawa. Number one, si inventory at si PPE. So magkano yung adjusted deficit? 5.7 million. And that is the deficit to be wiped out. That will be your answer for number one. Okay? Then, ano ang entry natin para ma-wipe out yung deficit? That is, debit, share premium. Since this is a recapitalization procedure, sa share premium natin kukunin yung pang wipe out sa deficit. Then, credit, retained earnings. Now, let me ask you, after the, after the process of wiping out the deficit, magkano na balansin ng retained earnings? Zero agad siya. Okay? Kasi ang, ang main objective lang natin sa quasi-reorganization is to wipe out the deficit. Pag sinabing wipe out, easy zero out lang natin siya. Okay? Sige. Number two, tinatanong tayo, magkano daw ang share premium after quasi-reorganization? Okay, so let's, let's start with the balance of the share premium prior to quasi-reorganization. Magkano daw siya kanina? 3.3 million. Next, Yung reduction in par value, ipapasok nyo siya sa share premium. Therefore, mag add up. Tama? Magkano siya? 6.3 million na. Eh, ginamit natin siya para i-wipe out ang deficit. Magkano we wipe out natin? 5.7 million. So, magkano na lang ang share premium? 600,000. Tandaan nyo ah, hindi yung share premium ang we na wipe out ang deficit. Okay? So, answer for number 2, 600,000. Number 3, how much is the retained earnings after quasi-reorganization? Our answer, zero. Automatically, zero ang sagot. In all cases ba yun, sir? Yes. Pag quasi-reorganization, ang objective lang talaga natin is to wipe out the deficit. Therefore, pag tinanong kayo ng ng balance ng retained earnings after quasi-reorganization ay huwag ka na mag-compute, zero agad siya. In all cases ng quasi-reorganization, zero palagi ang retained earnings. Okay? So I suggest, pag may quasi-reorganization problem, 
tignan mo kagad yung tanong. Pag nakita mo ang tanong, how much is the balance of retained earnings after quasi reorganization? Huwag ka nang magsaya ng oras, zero mo na agad ang sagot. Okay? Pero pag iba ang tanong, ay, huwag ka mag-shortcut. Isolve mo siya. Kasi yung shortcut na sinabi ko, that only applies to retained earnings after quasi reorganization. Last one. What would be the balance of the total shareholders' equity after quasi-reorganization. So, ano nga ulit ang laman ng total sheet natin based on our fifth part of our video? Nandiyan sila share capital, subscribe share capital, share premium, RE or deficit, OCI or loss, and treasury shares. Pero in this case, tatlo lang naman ang nakita natin. Ano yon? Share capital, share premium, retain earnings. Okay. Magkano share capital after quasi-reorganization? O, oh, compute natin. That is, before quasi-reorganization, may balance daw siyang 10 million. E nagkaroon ng reduction in par value. So, nabawasan siya ng 150 times 20,000 shares. That is, 3 million. So, magkano share capital after quasi-reorganization? 7 million. Share premium after quasi-reorganization. Na-compute natin yan kanina, guys. That is 600,000. Last one. Magkano RE after quasi? Automatically, zero. So, how much is your total she after quasi reorganization? Answer? 7.6 million. Alright? And that ends your illustrative problem on quasi reorganization. Tandaan nyo, ah, yung illustrative problem deals with recapitalization. What about revaluation, sir? Halos pareho lang sila except for the account to be used sa pang wipe out ng deficit. Pag recapitalization, nakita nyo na kanina, share premium ang ginamit. Pero pag nag-revaluation, revaluation surplus naman. The same procedures pa rin. Gets? Okay. Oh, last one. What are the requirements of SEC for companies that un that that is undergoing quasi-reorganization. Number one, retained earnings subsequent to the quasi-reorganization shall be restricted to the extent of the deficit wiped out. Oh, di ba sa fifth part ng video natin kanina, nabanggit ko yung about sa quasi-reorganization, that is a part of appropriated retained earnings. Specifically, anong klaseng appropriation? Legal appropriation. Kasi SEC required eh. Tama? Second, the quasi-reorganization shall be disclosed for at least three years. Therefore, dapat nakasabi yan sa notes to financial statements ng company na nag-undergo siya ng quasi-reorganization. Pero dapat nakasulat yan sa notes to financial statements for three periods. And that's it. That's the end of shareholders' equity. So, thank you for listening, guys. I hope naintindihan nyo yung discussions natin. Okay? Bye-bye!